So the Raw show last night, what's the story of the Raw show? I'm a man who likes to look at the overall story. Well, the story is they didn't do the same thing that they've been doing for weeks now. Long interview, 18-minute match, long interview, 18-minute match, interference, interference, interference. They changed it up a little bit, and it was better. Dave said it was more like a Vince McMahon show. I guess it, it was in in the sense that you know there was more sports entertainment and less wrestling on the show, but it was also a better variety. And unlike a normal Vince show, there was only one thing on the show that was monstrously stupid, and and hopefully we can get it over with sooner rather. This stupid Dexter Lim- Dexter Loomis Miz thing it's just it's the worst. But finally, we got to the point. They'll be having a match next week. And if Miz wins, Dexter Loomis is out of here forever. And if Loomis wins, he becomes a WWE wrestler. That's the point? What this has to do with him choking out Miz every week, I don't really? know. I'm over it. Well, yeah, it's, it's the point. We're actually getting a match out of it. It's the same angle every single solitary week. I'm sick of it. That man was in that man's other man's house with his kids and a babysitter, right? Like... <laughs> This was this was yeah, a long stupid. way. It's this been was stupid from day one to get to where they wanted it to sucks. go. It sucks. And a bad cake spot too, for heaven's sakes. It is the one of the worst things you can do in wrestling is screw up a cake spot, and they did. All right, so it opened up with a DX skit where they're all backstage joking around and swearing. Hey, listen, I like swearing. I laughed. I don't even know what they said half the time. Hunter said something that was bleep from before he opened his mouth till afterwards. And th- even all of DX was a gas, so I can only imagine what that guy said. But anyway, they didn't do much else on the show, to be honest. We had a long bloodline segment where Roman Reigns was going to chew out Jey Uso for being a hothead again. But then Sammy steps up and says, excuse me, you, you gave me permission to handle this. And so Roman steps back and lets, and Sammy's so over. And Sammy's essentially telling Jay, you're not being very oozy. You need to be, you need to be cool. And man, Jay is so mad and he's about to flip his lid. But out comes Matt Riddle. And to their credit, to their credit, Matt Riddle says, you know, I lost a match a while ago, which by the way, was under the previous regime. So they could have just thrown it out the window. But he goes, I lost a match, and I can I can never challenge for the title as long as Roman has it. But come on, bro. Let's just do it anyway. And uh, and they would not go back on the stipulation. Roman says, ain't happening, brother. So Riddle says, well, I'd like to face another member of the bloodline. So now Jay, Jay's like, oh, well, what, what about old Sammy here? What about the honorary use? And they talk Sammy into accepting the match for later. Segment's awesome. Everybody plays their role great. In fact, like the one guy, the worst guy playing his own role was Riddle. That's how good everybody else was in this segment. Then we had Johnny Gargano beating Austin Theory. Literally, they've been building this up for like four weeks. And they do the match and and Gargano just beats him. And I got no problem with like no interference and a guy, the baby face winning everything like that. My my issue is, honestly, am I supposed to take this Austin Theory seriously in any conceivable way? I'm supposed to buy it when it's time for this guy to cash in that thing. I don't. He's a geek. His character is a total geek. He's a loser. He can't catch a win to save his life. I don't know why he's got the briefcase, and I don't know why I'm supposed to care. I like it right now. His booking Here's is why. horrific. It's here, but it's not, Brian, if they build him back up. He's been a loser and a geek since day one. And just by being associated with Vince McMahon did not make him a star. Okay. It didn't. It put him in higher profile situations. And frankly, like the RKO at WrestleMania or with the stunner, he lived up to it. But the bottom line is he's always been a loser. And the fact of the matter is, if you want to take him seriously as a future star, you are going to have to build him back up anyway, briefcase or not. So you can have him lose the briefcase to me i have him hold on to it we've had bigger losers in the past have the briefcase damian sandow and cody rhodes that whole feud for that thing was completely ridiculous as well as a bunch of other people but if they from maybe around survivor series they start building him back up he starts getting wins he starts becoming a serious character who's just not a jerk who smiles and takes a picture of himself good then actually build him up and make him mean something. Bro, when that happens... He's a loser either way. When that happens, get back to me. But right now, he is going... He's had the case for six months. I know. He's lost 
15 straight matches. Yeah. I'm not sure that's that's worse than or that's better than Damian Sandow. I I suspect he had at least one but match. But how out of long 15. does he have before he's got to cash Six that months. in? Okay. We're, we're running out of a, time that's a here. a long way. Six. Not going into mania season. Look, we got the whole rest of the year and then into mania season. If they build this guy up so it actually means something after mania, that's far more important than him getting, you know, doing anything with Johnny Gargano right now. And I know I'm hoping against hope here, but look, uh, the the coat of paint worked on Dominic Mysterio, at least for right now. I'll be willing to take it on Austin Theory. Well, when it happens, get back to me. I will. But we'll this, do it on this show. This sucks. We'll talk about it. Ray Mysterio beat Chad Gable, and then afterwards Dominic and the crew attacked him, and Dominic beats him down, and he's begging his father to hit him, but Ray will not hit his child. So Dom hits him with a clothesline from behind. Poor Ray bumps right into the top rope. I don't know if he broke his nose, but he's bleeding everywhere. And then Rhea holds him. Dom hits a 619. Comeback commercial, Ray's in t- he's sobbing uncontrollably. Yeah, he broke his nose. And what his child has done to him. <laughs> and then the Judgment Day is doing this promo, and, man, they 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 hand that mic to Dominic. And I know people are talking about, you know, crowd sweetening, and there is a degree of crowd sweetening. There's a very obvious one on the pay-per-view where you actually could see the people standing up and going like this so you knew it was real. But then they all sat down, but the sound kept going. Yeah. That was weird. But... I also I also got uh, uh, reports from people that were at the pay per view that they said, yeah, there's some crowd sweetening, but dude, this this crowd was hot, but especially was for the, the Bray Wyatt deal. That was the problem was you saw the crowd be hot and then you're seeing a weird reaction. And frankly, last night, the mixing on the show, I could be crazy. It could be the app I was through, but they had some really odd moments last night, too, that well, were that were noticeable. It's not the end of the world, there, but they were noticeable to a viewer. There is sweetening, but you do you do realize people that when you put salt on a steak. It's still steak. Like, these crowds, it's not imaginary like they're not making any noise. They are adding sweetening on top of the noise they're making. And, man, when they give that mic to Dom, oh, my God, the heat this guy generates. He's hated. And, you know, everyone was like, oh, why put Dom in the Judgment Day? Who cares? But He's a thousand times better as a member of the Judgment Day than he was as Ray's geek son tag team partner that lost all the matches and was totally vanilla. So they do the big thing, and out comes AJ. They want AJ to join. AJ acts like he's going to join. But in fact, he says, I wasn't talking about joining you guys. And out come Gallows and Anderson. Big brawl. Baby faces clear the ring. We got six exactly as I said yesterday on this very show. That's what they're doing. <clears throat> Yes. Oh, yeah. Carl dropping that title first. Yep. Well, not first, but <laughs> he's, for he's that. going back to drop it. Reigns, Heyman, and Solo Sokoa are about to leave the arena. And uh, Roman's like, Jay, you're staying here. You got to help the honorary use win. And Jay's like, well, well what about uh, Solo? Roman says he's going with me to party in New York. And, man, Jay is so sad. We had Candice LeRae versus Bailey. Six minutes, Bailey beat her. Or no, I'm sorry, Bailey went for a finish and Candice beat her with a cradle. So Bailey loses two matches in a row, and then uh, and then they're beaten down. Candice and Bianca runs in. Bailey gives her a mistimed elbow. It was actually mistimed by Bianca. She didn't bump on time, and they're they're teasing that Bailey is going to get another title shot after losing a championship match on pay-per-view and then losing to Candice LeRae the next night. It's not perfect, everybody. We still got some booking problems here. <laughs> we had the Miz birthday party, which was one long booking problem. Ugh. It's like Miz admits, you know Loomis is going to show up. They go out anyway. Loomis shows up. He goes after Miz. Miz accidentally boots his wife, who totally missed times putting her face in the cake. Twice. And then literally she has to just rub her face in the cake when the camera's not Jump on her. Cake. <laughs> God, this sucked. They set up the match for next week. We had Omos beating two geeks, one of whom was not named after me. You sure? Bobby Lashley's going to face Seth Rollins, but he's cutting this promo, and he mentions beating Brock Lesnar. So Lesnar teleports because he's got a lot of money. He has the ability to teleport from a farm in Saskatchewan to the building. <laughs> And he's all mad that uh, Lashley said that, so he comes out and kills him. And then Seth demands the match, 
And he makes fun of Lashley saying, I thought you were a soldier. So Lashley accepts the challenge. Seth beats him. Bobby Lashley, literally a victim, was booed unmercifully. This entire He was booed when Brock was killing him. He was booed when Seth Rollins beat him. Like, man, this guy actually has a case for these fans. But he'll probably stay babyface. Elias returns next week. Matt Riddle beat Sami Zayn. 16 minutes. Good match. At one point, Jay was going to interfere, but Sami goes, no! So then later, they're outside, and, you know, Jimmy wants to interfere, and Jay goes, no! Honorary you said... So, Sami gets beaten. So, Roman ain't going to be happy about that. Uh, Jay's we're in gonna see, isn't he? We're going to yeah. see who he takes it out on. The storyline is great. Everyone's it awesome is. in the storyline. It's the best thing in WWE. And then the main event. It's the best thing in wrestling. What's better than that? I'd have to think, but I'm trying to finish this report. Oh, come on. DX comes out for their anniversary celebration. Oh, Ugh. Seven Ugh. minutes. Terrible. They come out. Should have beat them up. They're old. They know they're old. They, they acknowledge they they're old. old. <laughs> they acknowledge that, what are we doing? But everybody cheers. And they do all their they got old, glow sticks. They do all their, their catchphrases. They mention Billy Gunn. Road Dog's exhausted doing his thing. Hunter's exhausted, literally says, I got to take a second to catch my breath. Then he does his deal, and they go off the air. They clearly didn't want to do this, but they figured they had to sell some tickets. So there you go, the 25th anniversary of DX here in 2022. Back in a moment, Observer Live. I totally forgot this story until just now. And it happened when I was a kid, and so I think there's a decent chance that it could have been, like, a dream. Yes. And so, like, I was chopping the tree, and uh, I just remember looking up, and all of a sudden, like, this was a weird thing. I remember I looked up, and there were Ewoks in the tree. That was definitely a dream. And I saw it coming down, <laughs> and all of a sudden, I was like, I woke up later. This is the weird thing he says. Yeah. It is. Well, it is weird. weird about it. It is weird. There were Ewoks in the tree. Yeah. That's weird. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.